Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be discussing asthma, the different categories of asthma going from intermittent to persistent severe, and also the different treatment strategies for each of these levels of asthma going from step 1 to step 6. I'll tell you which category requires which treatment, and by the end of the video you'll be able to categorize a person's asthma as well as learn the treatment strategies for it. So let's hop right in with asthma categories. So how do you categorize asthma? You start with uh, three main issues, the daytime symptoms, the nighttime symptoms, and the pulmonary function test results. So these are the main three things we look at. For daytime symptoms, if we're looking at our most mild form of asthma, which is intermittent, we have one to two times per week of daytime symptoms. Now, what does that mean? That means one to two times per week, the person requires use of their Saba albuterol inhaler to manage their symptom. Now nighttime symptoms are a little different because they're considered monthly symptoms, okay? So one to two times per month, if the patient wakes up in the middle of the night with difficulty breathing, that is considered a nighttime symptom and it's counted towards our criteria. And then for our pulmonary function tests, we have two things we look at. We look at FEV1 and we look at FEV1 over FVC. For FEV1, that's going to be 80% of the predicted value. Now, the uh, predicted value here is based on age, weight, gender, etc. And it's going to be 80% of what we predicted, so it's going to be reduced. And FEV1 over FBC is going to be normal. Now, that trips a lot of people up because asthma is considered an obstructive airway disease. It should be FEV1 over FCC should be low, so below 70. And the reason why it's normal is because the architecture of the lung hasn't been... Um, affected yet. So even though we are asthmatic, our FEV1 is reduced, our total lung architecture, uh, our FVC, FEV1 ratio is not affected yet. We'll get the effect with our more severe versions of asthma, which are moderate persistent and severe persistent, and we'll see that in just a second. Now here you see that I've grouped intermittent with persistent mild. Now the reason for that is that the PFTs are going to be the same for these two categories. The only way to differentiate them is through a frequency of daytime symptoms and nighttime symptoms, okay? So for daytime symptoms, we have three to six times per week of requiring our uh, rescue inhaler. And then here we have three to four times per month of nighttime wake, waking up due to shortness of breath. So frequency of these symptoms are the main differentiator. So here you see that we heat hit almost a week's worth of symptoms, but not quite there yet. So that's when we get to our lower category here, which is moderate and severe. Now this is daily symptoms. So seven days per week of symptoms every single day. So if we require our uh, rescue inhaler once per day for seven days, that's uh, moderate. And then severe is multiple times per day, again, for seven days. That's how we differentiate daytime frequency in these two. And then for nighttime frequency, this is eight times per month plus, and then this is every single day, okay? Seven days per week of nighttime symptoms. So if you all have daily asthma symptoms, multiple times per day, and nightly asthma symptoms, where you wake up, you are in the severe category. If you have daily asthma symptoms, but less frequent nightly asthma symptoms, you are in the moderate persistent category. Okay, and then another way we can differentiate these two, not just based on the frequency of their symptoms, but on the PFTs is that our FEV1 is going to be 60 to 80% for moderate persistent, and it's gonna be below 60 for severe persistent. Then our ratio, FEV1 over FVC, is going to be reduced by less than 5%. So we're going to get anywhere from 66 to 69%. Remember, our normal is 70 of predicted. And then here we're going to be at 65% or less. So greater than 5% reduction in the ratio is severe persistent. Now, why this matters? Why does the categorization matter based on the symptom severity? Well, it's to do... Uh, treatment assessment. What treatment do you start a person on? Do you start them on step one, step two, step three, step four? Um, 
which one do they start on based on which category they're in. So let's do a general assessment. To be in step one, you are in intermittent asthma categorization. Step two is persistent mild. I'll put MI. Three and four are persistent moderate. And five and six are persistent severe. Okay. So we'll talk about what's the difference between three and four and five and six. But let's uh, do a quick recap as we talk about treatment. All of these people require a rescue inhaler, no matter what you are, what category you're in. But the difference between the therapies is really in their controller therapy. So on top of that, uh, asthmatics have a daily controller therapy to reduce symptoms. And this is either a steroid, a LABA, a LAMA, and as well as a potential immunotherapy. So if I have intermittent asthma, one to two symptoms per week, daily, one to two symptoms per month, nightly, with my FEV1 80%, FEV1 over FVC is normal, then I have no daily controller therapy. If I get put into persistent mild, then I have three to six times per week symptoms, daily, three to four times per month, nightly symptoms. Again, my FEV1 is 80% and FEV1 over FVC is normal. Then I'm going to add on an inhaled low dose corticosteroid, inhaled corticosteroid. Now the inhaled corticosteroids used here are fluticasone and budesonide. I've put them down here for reference. So I'm adding an inhaled corticosteroid on top of my rescue SABA, which everybody gets. Now, moving to step three, these are usually for people with persistent moderate asthma. These are low dose inhaled corticosteroids, again, similar to our step two, but we're gonna add on a LABA. So that's gonna be a long acting beta agonist to try to open up those lungs more. And here it's usually for metarol. So this person is going to have a com combination inhaler with an inhaled corticosteroid and for metarol mixed together in there and they're gonna only have one medication, but this is step three therapy, and it's usually used for persistent moderate. Now, if our persistent moderate person has not responding well to our initial step three therapy, then we can move them to step four, which we increase the dose of the inhaled corticosteroid from low to medium, okay? So how do we know what to do, whether to put our persistent moderate in step three or step four? Well, we usually start them in step three. So we see that they're persistent moderate. We start them in step three. Then we reevaluate every two to six weeks. If they're not uh, getting better in that time frame, let's say in the two or six weeks where we reevaluate them, we can consider moving them down to an increased ICS dose to put them in step four. Okay. Now, persistence to veer are started on step five, which is not a low, not a medium, but it's, 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 sorry, it's a medium dose inhaled, inhaled corticosteroid with the LABA. Don't be confused. That's our formeterol. And also on top of that, we have a LAMA, a long acting muscarinic agonist, which is going to further help dilate our lungs. And this is teotropium, the only one approved for asthma. So, uh, now our persistence severe is started in step five, but let's say they don't respond to it. We're going to increase the inhaled corticosteroid dose from medium to high. And this is also, again, continuing with the combination of LABA. And we can also add oral corticosteroids here. So instead of the LAMA, we switch that out for an oral corticosteroid. And you can consider adding on top of that immunosuppressive therapy, sorry, immunotherapy like an omalizumab for allergic asthma, which will target the IgE. All right, so let's do a quick review. Everyone with asthma gets SABA, okay? So that's our albuterol inhaler. It can be any of these other ones as well. But on top of that, people get a daily controller. If they're classified as intermittent, they get nothing for their daily controller. If they're persistent mild, which means three to six daily, uh, per week, uh, three to four per month of nightly symptoms, and then normal PF, close to normal PFTs, we have an in additional low dose inhaled corticosteroid. We add the LABA as soon as we get to step three, as soon as you get to persistent moderate status. Now the LABA ICS combination continues. The only thing that changes is the dosage of the ICS in that inhaler. So you're in medium dose as soon as you get to step four. That's also for persistent moderate. And 
uh, persistent severe in step five, and you only move to high dose ICS in step six where you're persistent severe. Okay, so we, we reserve high dose inhaled corticosteroids for persistent severe step six. The only thing that changes between step five and six is you switch out your long acting muscarinic agonists to your oral, oral corticosteroid, and you also increase the dose of the inhaled corticosteroid. The LABA is always there. Okay, and now that we talked about um, general treatment, your day to day treatment for asthma, let's talk about treating asthma exacerbations. So, what you may have noticed here when I wrote down intermittent and the persistent categories, I also wrote down an exacerbation requirement. So, zero to one exacerbations, these are yearly. Okay, so we had weekly, monthly criteria, now we have yearly criteria. If you have zero to one exacerbations, this requires uh, um, going into the hospital because you can't manage your asthma on your own, um, then you are still in the intermittent category. If you have two plus exacerbations per year, or you go into the hospital for asthma management due to poor management at home, then you are in the persistent category and you can uh, subcategorize based on the daily, weekly, and monthly symptoms, as well as the PFTs. Okay, so status as masochist is equal to the number of exacerbations. And how this is managed, generally when the person comes in, they instantly receive oxygen and uh, SABA to manage their symptoms. Then you ramp up therapy based on their O2 sat and uh, their ability to manage their airway. So you can always consider to intubate if they're unstable, if they're hypoxic, if the treatment isn't working, you have on top of this, so how do you ramp up therapy? On top of this, you can add inhaled corticosteroids, you add a SAMA, remember we have we had a LAMA here, long-acting muscarinic agonist for our step five, but here it's a SAMA, so this is not uh, teotropium, but it's iprotropium, and this is shorter acting, it's for hospital use for exacerbations. And then finally, if that also doesn't work, you can add on magnesium, which is known to help with uh, bronchodilation as well. So these are our step-up therapies for status asthmaticus management in the acute setting. And remember, zero to one exacerbations is intermittent, two plus is you are in the persistent asthma category. All right, well, I hope this was a good review for you guys on asthma diagnosis and management, and I'll see you in the next video.